right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Jim McCarthy, who is the CEO of Gold Star Events and, uh, and as well StellarTickets.com. And we're going to talk about a really exciting and something I'm actually quite excited about talking about, and that is the the, the future of live entertainment, okay? Uh, because let's face it right now, the future of the live entertainment industry, um, a lot of people are saying there is no future, Jim. Yeah, it's a, we're a bit on the dark side of the moon right now. Uh, it's been, obviously, this pandemic has been hard on a lot of industries and certainly none harder than ours because we went from 100% to 0% over the course of about uh, 36 hours back in March. Mm -hmm. And let's face it, I mean, live entertainment was going through the roof, wasn't it? I mean, because I mean, all over the world, the popularity of, of live entertainment had, had just exponentially grown. Uh, I mean, it seems to have gone through such a such a renaissance or something, because I mean, I grew up on I mean, I grew up on live entertainment, to be honest, that's all we ever used to do growing up in Dublin is we just used to go to see bands all the time. Uh, and then over in the UK and all of that in the, in the States. But it's become much more of an experience, you know, it's become much more of a broader, wider audience and much more of an experience than before. So how, what does the future look like? How do you bring that back, given the fact that people are suddenly all, you know, kind of unused to being in large gatherings, shall we say? Yeah, we'll see. I, I have no doubt in the long term, it will be just as important and just as popular as before. Mm. Where that begins, I don't know, right? There, there's going to be some question about how, you know, is, th is there a day when, you know, there's an all clear and everybody pours back into the concert halls and the theaters? I, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But I feel like if we're having this conversation, John, um, three years from now, I have no doubt that we will be in a very healthy state again for live entertainment because this is something people need. You were talking about, you grow up with it. It's an irreplaceable kind of experience. Yeah. So there's no, it, that's it, never going to change. No, it is irresponsible. And to, to be honest, as you know, when you um, when you get older and you maybe are, your memory isn't as good as it used to be. I mean, some of my favorite moments are when I um, I see a band pop up or whatever. And I'm like, you know, I think I saw them live. And then I remember I did. I know. It. Uh, so so what are the what are the steps do you think that are going to take place as we kind of because it isn't going to be a like you know one day green light everybody run back in the door so what do you see as the as the kind of evolution from here on i think that we're going to have a lot of um false starts and stumbling starts um and eventually we're going to see a rapid change so it's going to it's going to kind of it's going to sort of do do a thing where we, we get started and stop and, and walk back and then get started and stop and walk back. And I think we'll hit a point either with vaccinations, treatments, prevention, et cetera, where we just get rapidly more confident um, that it's okay to be in those spaces. And then it's going to be a stampede. Um, the question is just, is that three months, six months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months from now? Um, and if I had to guess, I would say it's probably sometime in the early to mid 2021 time frame but that's just that's just a guess and do you see do you see um live shows uh the configuration of those changing at all or do you see new and innovative things happening maybe you know people use this break as an opportunity to kind of look at the traditional configuration of live shows and maybe come up with some new and innovative ideas yeah, that's what we've done. So our, our business, mm -hmm. like, like everybody in, in the inter live entertainment business, came to a complete halt, uh, yeah. almost like, frankly, went in reverse because there was a lot of tickets that had to be re refunded and canceled. Sure. Um, and so um, we, it, it gave us a time to really take stock of what the, what the future holds. Everybody, I, I think, has seen these sort of online shows that have begun to pop up. Mm -hmm. um, they started out very simple. They started out very... Uh, casual kind of, um, you know, cheaply made, you know, free types of things. And they've gotten more and more innovative. And we took from that, um, that if you extend the idea of what you can do with an online event, an online show, it can be truly something special. So we've actually, over the last three months, built a platform called Stellar, which is designed to really give a live entertainment uh, producer or venue the tools to make online events a, a major part of what they do. So I see going forward, there's going to, I think I'm as bullish as I ever have been long-term on 
in-person events, but I also think that the, the online event as a, uh, not just a, a stopgap, but actually mm -hmm. as a supercharger, a supercharger to the live entertainment business is really where it's going. Uh, we've never had that before, but when you think about how that layers on, it's, it's a great addition to the mix. No, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, this is a this is a, a, a great solution that you've come up with, and obviously because uh, you know just meeting platforms or webinar platforms are not ideally suited to um, live events. But it's interesting because um, I'm a big um, I, I do martial arts, and I'm a big mixed martial arts and UFC fan, yeah. and. And they have shown themselves, I mean, how you can continue to drive a large viewing audience without having any, with live events, but without having any, you know, any, any uh, audience members there. So, I mean, I think there's definitely an appetite for it. And I think that a lot of people, you know, probably maybe a lot of people have tuned into things and looked at things online that they maybe haven't before in, in, in such regularity. And maybe they're starting to get more used to the medium. I don't think there's any, they definitely are. I, I don't know if you're, if you were following this, but um, the K-pop band BTS about six weeks ago did an online concert. 750,000 people bought a ticket and watched. Uh, it's just yeah, k-pop is just insane yeah when, when you I mean, think they, about they, that, their popularity their popularity is is incredible and you know you're selling enough tickets to you know populate the city of san francisco um it's and it's, if you think about and if you think about that it just uh, that example right uh how many how many shows would they normally have to play do you think to be in front of seven hundred and fifty thousand people a lot i mean they i'm, I'm here in pasadena california and they were actually, I was talking to one of my friends at the Rose Bowl a few weeks ago about this. And they came to Pasadena last summer, 2019, and played three, you know, full nights at the, at the Rose Bowl, which as you know, big venue, right? Yeah. Still just a, all three nights put together, still just a, a fraction of, of the number of people they played to on their online show. So it is a, it's a, it's a reach, um, it's a tool for reach that's never existed mm -hmm. in before. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think, um, and by the way, I think the 1990, the 1988 Depeche Mode at the Rose Bowl, I would have loved to have seen that concert because that's probably one of the classics. Oh, you weren't there though? <laughs> no, I wasn't there. <laughs> I was back in Ireland at that stage. But whenever I think of the Rose, whenever I hear the Rose Bowl, I always just think of the just great uh, renditions of, uh, you know, everything counts in large amounts or whatever from Depeche right. Mode because it's such right. a great bit of footage. So tell me, um, with your platform then, is this is this something that any size um, you know uh, entertain or any size entertainer can use from a small band to a large band or is it something that's really built for scale? Uh, it's definitely something that can be used at, at different scales. Uh, it is a professional tool, though. We talk we call it total mm -hmm. show management because it yeah. gives you the entire platform that you need from ticketing, streaming, um, the coaching, everything carry you all the way through. But it's not a, it's not a platform for you know the sort of singer songwriter who opens a laptop and just starts playing that that's right. that's kind of covered by some other tools um mm -hmm. this this is a total show management system for professional live entertainment organizers but if you have if you're in that category and you don't have any experience with it this is a system that can get you over the humps and 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 doing it well and if you do have experience it's ready to go um high quality audio and all that all that kind of stuff so what are some of the things that you think maybe uh, you know, somebody will be surprised at that you have to look after, that a platform like this takes care of, maybe some of the things that they wouldn't be aware of when they, when they think about doing a live online event? Well, I mean, you know, one of the big things is just integrating the ticketing with the streaming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's, that's been a frustrating experience for a lot of consumers is that if they buy a, a ticket, and I'm doing air quotes that probably nobody can see, but, um, they buy a ticket to an online show, they get the same, you know, link and password as everybody else. I had a friend who uh, saw, a, a, you know, an online concert that she thought would be interesting and she thought her mother would, would be interested as well. So she bought two tickets thinking, you know, my mother's in Florida and I'm somewhere else. And so they <laughs> paid for two tickets and got the same link and password, you know, for both. So, right. I mean, one thing it does, and this is of course very important to, Sure. To the provider is, you know, integrating the streaming and the ticketing in one system so that you're getting a real ticket just like you would uh, if you were going to an in-person venue. So that's one of the key things. On top of that, you've got high quality audio and video, which, you know, Zoom is not built for that. Um, mm -hmm. 
so you know up to 4k video and and cd quality audio and and you've got a, a way for people to watch in a very enjoyable uh method like you could watch on apple tv it, it it's you know it can be a sit back experience and uh and ways to interact interact with other fans react with applause and things like that to the show it, it's more does it is designed for shows not for meetings or webinars or, or classes that's a, that's fantastic and how has the how has the reception been to this it's been great it's been great you know everybody in our industry is looking for tools to you know add to you know take this time to build their capabilities when it comes to online shows and generate some income and connect with their fans so there are a lot of people in our industry that we work with already. I mean, we've been working mm -hmm. with for 20 years almost. Um, and so we're reaching out to them saying, we built this in, for you in large part because we know you need it. And if you take this time to really get good at this, it's going to be a really, really valuable uh, addition to your, you know, to your tool set when, when things do come back in person. And so um, and would some of the, so would these venues bring artists in themselves, like book artists like they normally would, bring them into their venue and do a live online show? They could do. Or, you know, what we've also seen is artists are doing it directly. You know, if the, yeah. if the artists have enough technical capability and they can find a space, they can, you know, create a safe environment and, and produce a show and reach out directly to their fans. And it's, it's a really, really nice, profitable, you know, model for them to do that too. Mm -hmm. so it, can be, it can be done a number of different ways. Yeah, and what are some of the what are some of the really exciting events that you've put on so far, or have gone through your platform? Well, we're we're early days, but we've had some some pretty great stuff. We've had magicians from the Magic Castle in Los Angeles. We had a band called um, uh, the Fab Four, which is one of the best Beatles tribute tribute bands in the mm -hmm. country. That plays for their fans every every week on Stellar. Um, right. We've got um, we've had comedy clubs. We've had and we've got a whole bunch of stuff coming up now. So the the platform is, uh, as you and I are talking right now, still mm -hmm. in the last stages of its beta rollout. But there, right now, I think ten or fifteen events for sale on the site, and probably ten times that number coming over the next few weeks. Wow, that's fantastic! And um, and so, um, how do you, uh, have the artists themselves, right? I mean, often because they you know play off the audience reaction and all of that kind of stuff how, how much has this been a challenge to them to figure out how they can create some excitement but in a virtual arena yeah it, it is a challenge it is a challenge and um you know one of the things that uh you know we've seen people do is to try to simulate that in a way right you even mm -hmm. see that some of the pro sports where they actually create a little bit of artificial crowd noise just so the players <laughs> remember yeah. that, that somebody's watching um, you know, our platform has the chat and the reactions. And, and so you could, if you wanted to, you could monitor, monitor that as an artist. What we've seen also is that the people who are sort of sitting on the control panel and producing the show will, will, will put, will post comments that people are making or, you know, kind of create a way for, for the artists to see what the people are doing that, that they, they can't see because they're playing or singing or acting or whatever. So it's uh it's one of the challenges of the empty, uh, auditorium mm -hmm. for sure. Um, and, and I guess, you know, one of the things that there's, there's what we're going through now and then yeah. how this connects when there's an in-person event as well. Like mm -hmm. when you're experiencing yeah. it at home and there are people experiencing it live, I think that's going to be a truly dynamic sort of amazing. Well, yeah, yeah. Cause it gives you the opportunity to sell two types of tickets, right? Doesn't it? It says you the opportunity to sell in-person tickets and then for people who either can't be there or, or want to watch it virtually, they get yeah. the best of both worlds. It's like you do with a lot of, um, obviously with sporting events. Yeah, that's the thing. Sports has really set the model for this. And I, mm -hmm. I think um, when we talk to people in music and theater and comedy and, and genres like that, it's easy for them to understand the, the connection between a broadcast, whether it's online or on TV or whatever, mm -hmm. and attendance, right? Nobody thinks that the sports leagues would be better off if you couldn't watch them on TV. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, yeah. That, you know, and yet somehow sometimes people think, well, they won't come to the theater, they won't come to the concert mm -hmm. if they can watch it at home, but it's not the case. You're just basically expanding the audience by 10x. Yeah, you are, because there's a, there's a complete different experience from being in person at something than there is watching it. So, I mean, there's, and sometimes, you know, and so there's a preference there too, which is you're now, as you say, you're enlarging your audience rather than, than shrinking it. 
And the other part of it is, hey, we've all been frustrated by those shows that we wanted to go to that were sold out and suddenly the tickets are selling for like 300 times their face value. So here's right. an opportunity to maybe, okay, you don't get to go to the show, but you get to see it live at the same time. That's right. And, and what I think is going to happen is that when we have in-person shows and online shows in the same, you know, at the same moment, is that um, the, the fact that people are buying a lot of online tickets is going to make the in-person tickets that much more valuable. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. the in-person attendees are going to know that they're sort of at the top of the pyramid of, of <laughs> experiencing which unfortunately you know human beings are just like that right like oh yeah yeah you can imagine people at the you can imagine people at the events like texting and, and you know their friends who are watching at home right. going oh it's so much better here yeah <laughs> i think the equivalent of that john for when we were you know, when we were teenagers was you know the radio st i remember this the radio stations used to play the music of the of the band that was in town you know and i grew mm -hmm. up in a, a pretty small yeah. town you know, everybody wanted to go to the concert, but there were only yeah. some tickets. And so the radio stations would say, for all you poor suckers out there who can't be at the concert, <laughs> we're going to play, you know, Bruce Springsteen's music or whatever. And everyone yeah, would, yeah. Would be like, well, at least I get to hear this. But, yeah, yeah. And then you're going, well, I've got all the albums at home. So thanks a bunch for that. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, it's, I think it's great. And it's funny. I mean, the innovation has... It's been interesting because I'm also like being being from Ireland and that like I'm a big soccer slash football fan, and you know the leagues the leagues restarted in Europe and and you know they're going through they're nearly finishing all the competitions now, but they went with the artificial crowd noises and whoever, I mean some of them whoever has been managing it has just done a phenomenal job because they'll yeah. like have the they'll have the booze if it's like you know the home team you know there'll be the booze and the they'll have the cheer then they'll have the oh something near misses and 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 it's kind of worked and i mean at the beginning i thought god it's a bit cheesy but after a while you were going you know it works well i i was watching some of the bundesliga games before yeah. they did that before they yeah did, and it just felt so i don't know still right you just had this feeling of like uh, I don't care. Do I care? You know, and uh, yeah. I, I'm like you, I thought to myself, like, this is going to be stupid. You know, this is going to be weird. But it's it's like they say, like, even if you give somebody a placebo and they know it's a placebo, it's yeah. still, you know, it's like it, that. It does. It does. Yeah. And I think, uh, I think with, uh, particularly with English football, uh, they, they thought they better turn up the sound really fast because they were hearing what was being said on the field and from the <laughs> sidelines and they didn't have enough bleep machines to keep up. <laughs> Probably not. Probably, yeah. Yeah. No, well, this is yeah. This this is this is fascinating. Um, so, um, would you and anything else you want to you want to mention before we go? Just to, about your platform, or just about maybe a re or a message to artists out there who are who are thinking about doing something like this. Um, what do they need to do to prepare themselves? Yeah, I, I th there's um, uh a big opportunity in online events for everybody in the live entertainment business, but there is some work that goes into figuring out how to get from where you are to, to there. My, my, what I really want people to, to take on board is that it can be done um, and that it's important that it be done. Um, and we can help, of course. Um, we have a, a resource called Stellar Academy that you can find at stellartickets.com or you can just contact us. We're, we're there to guide you through it. We've got resources. If you don't wanna work with us, they'll just help you understand you know how to get online events up and going and working for you but i just can't i just cannot admonish people in our industry enough that they need to take this seriously as an opportunity because it is a very big opportunity not just now but after things come back it's going to it's going to help make your you know as as you know the the, the live entertainment business the concert yeah. is dicey right i mean financially mm -hmm. it's a, it's a good business and people like it but it's also expensive to do if you really figure out the online part of it it could be a very strong business model that's permanently profitable in a way that it hasn't been. So I just encourage people to, uh, to think about how to do this, how to make it part of their, their normal business and go to stellartickets.com and we can help. Yeah. And, and it's funny just as I was just thinking, cause obviously, uh, you know, people, uh, Light, or bands and people rely a lot more on live entertainment than they used to because the you know the whole balance shifted from record sales to live because they weren't obviously making much as much money with the with digital music maybe this is now a way of clawing back some of that revenue by a completely different revenue stream yeah that's right that's right it it isn't doesn't require quite as much manual intervention just reach right what what the old mm -hmm. model had 
with recorded music as the leading re revenue source yeah. was reach, right? You, you didn't yeah. have to be uh, necessarily in a city to make money in that city. And this gives it back in a different way. Yeah, that's fantastic. Well, Jim McCarthy, thank you very much. All of Jim's information and the information about Stellar will be uh, below the, the contributor bio. The StellarTickets.com is the website yes, okay. um, to take a look at this. Um, listen, thanks again. I look forward to seeing an event on your platform really soon. You know, being a, a live entertainment junkie myself, I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Um, I'll keep you posted, John. Thanks for having me. All right. Thank you. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.